Now that we got the basics of building and flashing, how about we learn to display text to an LCD? If you haven't watched my ESP32 intro video, go ahead and watch that right now. I'll literally be right here waiting for you. Screens are useful to display data from a GPIO pin, for instance. If you were in my last ESP32 video asked about the 16x2 LCD and was trying to get it built, but was having issues with the header file. So let's see if we can get that working. All right, let's create this project. But first, in my last video, we went to the ESP IDF repo directory and ran that export uh, shell script. There's a better way. Open up your bash RC or your Z shell RC file. And we can add an alias. That alias I'm using is git underscore IDF equals where that uh, export script shell is. And don't forget this little dot here. Once you get that in there, go ahead and source your RC file. And at that point, you should be able to run git IDF. And it will set up just as if you had run the shell script from the repo. Now we can create our project. IDF.py create project. I'm going to call this LCD 16x2. Go ahead and change directory into there. Now, normally we'd go ahead and build, but we need our component. And to add a component, it's IDF pi add dependency and the name of the dependency. Each dependency in the ESP registry should have instructions on how to add it. So if we go to the uh, component in question here, these uh, Panagraph ESP32 IDF HD44780, I'm going to use the latest version. There is this uh, little uh, snippet we can just copy and paste directly into our shell. Now this actually doesn't get the dependency just yet. All it does is really set up our component file. So if we look in main, we have a IDF component.yaml. So this is showing all the dependencies. We have IDF for this component. We're gonna need at least uh, version 4.1.0 or greater. And then here's our uh, HD44780 header or, or a component. Okay, to actually get the component files we need, we should take a look at the docs. And fortunately, there is an IDF component manager. And if you scroll down a little bit, there's a IDF uh, pi reconfigure. So this is going to process our IDF component YAML file. It's going to create our dependencies locks, and then it's actually going to download all dependencies to a managed components directory. So let's go ahead and run that. All right, now if we open up our project, we see a managed components directory. And now we have our component added with our header and our C file. All right, let's go ahead and build now. Now this take, may take a minute for you because there are almost 1,000 components it's gonna build. All right, looks like everything went well. Let's go ahead and add some code to use this new component though. All right, I'm gonna include the headers we're gonna need once again for the entire project, but we're just gonna start once again with basic logging to see if everything works. So I'm gonna include our new header we just added, HD, oh, yep, sees it, that's good. We're gonna include our driver. We need the I2C that is actually on our LCD. And we need our ESP log once again can't spell oh boy can't even type and now we're gonna need the free rtos we need our free rtos and we're gonna need the free rtos um, task we're gonna ignore these uh ceiling lsp errors for now this stuff will compile without issue but at least this warning is telling me I'm not using this, but we are gonna use this later, so I'm gonna keep that one in this time. Now, just like we've done before, I'm gonna create a tag. I'm gonna call this LCD16x2, like this instead, there we go. And then we're gonna call ESP log. As you can see, there are multiple logs, but we're just gonna use I for information. We're gonna have our tag, and we're gonna say starting, app 
main. Let's go ahead and build. Okay, so this is saying u int 8t. I didn't write this, so this is our, oh, this is our <laughs> included header file. It doesn't have the information for that type. So we need to include std int. Okay, strange that they didn't um, include that. All right, let's try to rebuild. All right, that looks better. Okay, a quick aside. In my last video, I did a ch mod on my dev tty USB zero. That's not ideal. Long story short, I had set up OBS Studio to be working on my framework laptop that was running Fedora 41 with the Sway Windows Manager. With all the dependencies installed, I actually was recording. And I come back later to record, and the screen record, uh, I think it was Pipewire, was completely missing. I tried everything. So I had to move to a new computer and kind of forgot about uh, user mod. So if you use chmod, you will have to do that every single time you plug in a device and you want to flash. So the solution is just to use add yourself to the group. All right, first I need to plug in my ESP32. I believe they make these with USB-Cs, which would be great. All right, so if we LL dev TTY, USB zero, you're gonna see this group dial out. So if you wanna add yourself to that group, it's sudo user mod dash A, uppercase G, dial out, and whoever you are, so who am I? Add in your password. And if you wanna see which groups you are in, just run groups. And there, I am in dial out. Okay, let's flash, that's IDF pi dot dash p for the port, which was dev, tty usb zero, and flash. All right, looks like it works just fine. Now we're not seeing anything, so once again, IDF pi monitor. And here's our tag and starting app underscore main. Awesome. Remember to quit, it's a control right bracket. Okay, next, let's go ahead and attach our LCD to our ESB. I have the version that has the I2C module already installed and soldered and kind of ready to go. You can get versions without that module, but you'll have to do more wiring, which might be what you want for your project. This module does stick out a bit and may not be ideal for PCB or 3D prints. Also, the ESP32 does not fit well in a standard breadboard, so I suggest getting some of these kind of female-to-female -female wires. I think they're called DuPonts. You can get them off Amazon pretty cheaply, and they come with a whole bunch. That way we can plug in the ESP32 to the LSD without needing a breadboard. On the back here, there are four pins. We got ground, the voltage, uh, a data, and a clock. So I'm going to start with the ground. I'm going to use black for that. So that's going to go black. It's going to go there into the ground, which is the second one here. And then I'm going to use the voltage for red. And that is this one here, right next to the ground. And if everything's working fine, you will see something like this. So the light is on. Looks like I got a bunch of bunch of squares for whatever reason. And next, I'm gonna go ahead and do the data. I'm gonna use blue. I'm gonna plug that one into D21. These are actually kind of small and sometimes hard to read. So let's see, this one here. And then finally, the last one is SCL, which is for clock. I'm gonna plug that one into DC22. Okay, now I'm just going to move my ESP32 sort of out of the way and have this right here and ready to go. All right, let's go back into our project and let's go ahead and define some of these, uh, add some defines for some of these pins. So we need the address. I'm going to call this LCD ADDR 
and it should be at OX27 at using that address because of the example they have. They're using that address and it seemed to work. So we're going to continue to go with that. Next, we need to define our data pin that was in 21. We're going to define our clock pin, which I put in 22. And now we're going to define basically the parameters of our LCD, which is 16 by two. So there are 16 columns and then there are two rows. I believe this header file will work with the 16 by four LCD also. So if you have four, you can use four rows. All right, we should be good now to set up our LCD and actually display some text. So the first thing we actually got to do is actually create some room down here so we can put it more in the middle is we're going to need to init our LCD. So that's LCD init and my LSP is helpful today. So we need our address LCD ADDR. We need our data pin, which was SDA pin. We need our clock pin, which is SCL pin and our columns LCD calls and our rows LCD rows. Awesome. All right, now our LCD should be ready to go as long as we've done everything correctly. So first thing we should do is LCD clear screen. That will just remove everything off the screen. So next thing we do is actually write something out and that's done with write str. Takes a car pointer. So we can write, I don't know, hello there. Now we do have two lines, so this will actually Right on the first line, if we want to write to the second line, we use LCD set cursor. So the column is, if we set to zero, that's the first, basically where H is on the first line. And then the row would be the actual second line, basically. So now we set the cursor to this first character on the second line. We can also write in something else, write STR, and just write something else. So we have a total of 16. So if we go one, two, second row, I don't know how many characters that is, but uh, we have enough room for it. All right, let's go ahead and build and flash again. And let's go ahead and flash. All right, if all goes well, Awesome. Hello there. And second row. Now this is a basic, just static display. Let's go back in and add some dynamic text. I don't know. Let's say like counting down from 10 to zero. So we are going to go ahead and probably just go ahead and comment this out. And then we need more room down here. Okay. First thing we need is going to be a character array. This will be for a number. We're going to count down from 10. So two is going to be fine. So while true, let's go ahead and comment this out too. So while true, we're going to clear the screen and we're going to write the final count. Well, let's set our cursor somewhere in the middle. So let's do LCD set cursor. We'll go eight and then the second row. That's about in the middle. And now we're going to count down for int equal i equals 10. i is greater than equal to zero and i minus minus. So now we're going to use that uh, stdio header now. We're going to use s print f, not two f's, just one f, into our num. We're going to percent d that for digit and our i variable. And now we can LCD write our num. And then this is a loop. So we're going to need our V task delay. Oh boy. That shows us a lot of information. Now I can't see where I'm at. It was helpful. Ah, doing it again. Okay. We want to delay for one second. So that's 1000 milliseconds divided by port tick period milliseconds. Okay. And once that's done, let's go ahead and LCD. Clear the screen. LCD will just do right. How about uh, lift off? And then we'll do V task delay. 
We'll do, I don't know, two seconds. All right, so this is going to keep looping forever. We're going to clear the screen. We're going to write the final countdown. We're going to move our cursor over down to the second the second line and eight, eight characters over. Then we're going to count down from 10 down to zero. We're going to put our current I into num, and then we're going to write that out. And then we're going to delay a second, so it's counting down every second. And then once it's, af once it's reached zero, we're going to clear the screen and write lift off and wait two seconds. All right, let's go ahead and see if that works. You know, I think my LSP likes to play games and add something I don't need. Let's build that again. Oh, let me just make this bigger. Yep, yeah, sorry. That was too small. All right, and let's go ahead and flash. Oh, I must have forgot to do something there, didn't I? It does count down though, doesn't? And then lift off. Okay, let's uh, let's try to fix that. Oh, I put that in the wrong spot. I want to set that each time. All right, let's try that again. And flash. All right, moment of truth. Here we go. Oh. That's not good. You want to know why? Because we're an embedded world. You have to tell it exactly what you want it to do. And it will do what you want it to do. So basically, each time we write this out, what we want to do is reset it. Because what's happening, we first write out our 10. And then the second loop comes through and says, okay, your cursor is set at 8. Column eight, row one, that will be right here. So it adds a nine. The zero is still there and it adds an eight and a seven and so forth. So what we got to do is clear, basically clear this line. So we're going to set a cursor to zero, one, and then I'm going to write out a blank string. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, now that should do the trick. So let's try that all over again. Flash. And obviously the final countdown doesn't fit, so. And as you can see, that zero is gone and we're counting down. And lift off. Okay, it's bothering me. Let's go in and change final countdown to counting down or something. I don't know. And reflash and we should see it work now. Looks better. Now it's not off the screen and you can read everything. Awesome. Way to level up by doing. The code will be hosted on GitLab. Link will be in the description. And thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, share, and comment to defeat that algo monster.